Hi, my name is Karen Leva Baker, and I'm broadcasting on A Nurtured Life. That's our YouTube page. And that's also the name of our co-ed group with men and women in it. Learning what does it take to nurture the life that you are. Well, the life that you are is much more than what's between your ears. The life that you are is your entire body. And I have a 12 month program for women only. It's called the Life Worth Living Nurturary. In the program, we look at what makes your life worth living. So many people put the things that give them the most pleasure, the most charge in life, they put those things on hold. What's the point of that? And that's why people have regrets on their deathbed is because when they were alive, they didn't act like they were alive. Let's imagine a scenario where you're at my house and we decide we're going to go out to dinner with several other friends that are there with us. We decide we're gonna to go to the most mediocre restaurant that we can find. And we're gonna take the car that has the most miles and wear and tear on it. So we leave the nice car in the driveway and we go instead of to the posh restaurant that has the view of the lake and the sparkling lights hung in the live oak trees, we're gonna go somewhere that just is okay. Well, would you consciously make a choice like that? No way. You would go for the sparkly lights in the trees and driving there in the convertible Ferrari if you really had your choice. But we act like there's just this bland menu of options on the menu of life. Yeah we get accustomed to asking for what we think we can get rather than what we actually desire. And we even get accustomed to toning our desire down so we don't even know anymore what we want. When I ask my love beams in the 12 month Life Worth Living Nurturary what they want, sometimes they say, I don't know. And I believe them. They don't have conscious access to it. But if you ask a little child what they want, they know right away. They want a doll, an ice cream cone, candy. They want to watch a movie. They want Santa Claus. Kids know exactly what they want. And as adults, we've sort of numbed it down to ask for what we think we can get. So I'm in a process not alone, I might add. There's a whole community of people out there educating about the body, the energy system, the way that we juice ourselves to achieve great results alongside our excitement. So our results are happening in our electrical system of our body. We're feeling it. And on the outside, we're creating miracles because we're charged from the inside. There's whole communities out there that are working with aliveness. And the truth is, I didn't even really know there were whole communities. I thought that the people that trained me were the only ones on earth. It turns out that there's fields of study that are devoted to aliveness and to bringing the body back into a sensing way of experiencing rather than experiencing in our heads and evaluating whether it would be good, we can actually feel into our body and find out, is this the thing that enlivens me right now? Does this give me juice? It brings me to a story. This past weekend, I had the pleasure of attending the Austin Tantra Festival. 
it was two and a half days filled with excitement, dancing, bodies, touch, sensational exchanges, vulnerability, heart opening experiences, light, healthy vegetarian fare, music, manifestation, sexy people, outrageous people, outrageous experiences and intimacy. It was so alive. People were dressed there expressing their true characters, expressing their pleasure, expressing their playfulness. By the end of the weekend, I had so much energy that even though I fell over tired at the end of the day, it wasn't dead tired, it was live tired. And when I woke up on Monday, I was still electric. Tuesday night, I was still electric. And then the results I was producing in my business and my life haven't been produced since before the pandemic and all the shutdown. So literally, I charged my body up with all this excitement and energy from the crowd. They were all excited and loving and thrilled about what they were learning and sharing their wisdom. It was literally like plugging my Tesla in. And you know, your body really is a fine vehicle. I call it the body craft. But if we don't give it high voltage experiences, all that's going to happen is we're going to get old and tired. One of my favorite truisms, we don't stop dancing because we get old. We get old because we stop dancing. Movement is life. The moment that the tree outside in your yard stops conducting xylem and phloem up and down its vascular tissue, that's when it dies. And if the xylem and phloem starts slowing down, that's the sign that the tree is on the decline. So what are you doing to plug yourself into energy sources? Food alone won't do it. It takes fresh air, it takes movement, it takes whatever juices your system. <sighs> so back to the Tantra Festival. It was colorful, there were fun people, there was so much self-expression. And it wasn't until Wednesday morning when I woke up, literally over 48 hours after the festival was over, that I started to notice a decline in my energy level. Isn't that incredible? I was running for two days on the energy of that festival. And I remembered back to when I started learning the profession of coaching. It was back in 95. I flew out to Maui to meet this honest man who was able to tell me the magic and the interactions between the masculine and the feminine. He actually taught me to see clearly what was happening and to step back from my interpretation filters that were giving me a certain life. And I learned over the years to see clearly and give accurate feedback so that other people could stop doing the things that they were doing that were actually hurting themselves. And I arrive at the Tantra Festival only to find that a great majority of what I learned and what I've been practicing seems to mesh really nicely, overlap, engage, and even personify the teachings of Tantra that I was learning this weekend. So I feel kind of like I've come home to my community. I feel like the knowledge that's fascinated me for well over 20 years is actually a field of study that other people are engaged with themselves. And they're exciting people. They're people that are open-hearted and committed to the evolution of humans. And they're people that are thinking from the neck down as well as using their heads. So I feel like I've come home to my community. I feel at home. My body feels settled with those people. I feel like I can interact from who I really am. Did I mention that it was an amazing weekend? 
I guess you can figure that out from hearing me talk. So in the 12 month life worth living nurturery, we're about to complete the domain called body. And um, if you look back at my um, YouTube pages, A Nurtured Life, or Facebook pages, A Nurtured Life, you'll find that I've been talking about the body for this is the seventh week. Next week, I'm going to start talking about education and the value, importance, necessity of education in our lives. If we want to be effective, if we don't want to be effective, you know, don't get educated. But like one of my favorite bumper stickers says, you think education is expensive? Try ignorance. Although I don't really recommend that you try ignorance. But what I'll say is this is our last week in the domain of body. We've taken some major ground on understanding our bodies. We talked in A Nurtured Life about the body being an energy processor. We talked about so many different things. So if you're interested in some down to earth layperson's understanding of the body, then check back on A Nurtured Life to hear my past six um, broadcasts, podcasts rather, and um, go out and learn about your body. It is the seat of sensation. If you wanna feel good, you can't expect to feel good in your head because your head is not a unit of feeling. Your head is a unit of thinking and electrical processing and parsing and quantifying, and that's what the head is good for. The body, on the other hand, is just loaded with nerve endings. So if you wanna feel good, turn to your body and find out what makes it feel good. What makes the soft animal of your body fall in love? Speaking of animals, I have kitties on my dress. <laughs> and this is actually the last podcast of 2021. I won't say it's been an easy year, but I will say I've learned a tremendous amount about desire. And I've learned that even when everything outside of me is out of control, out of my control, maybe even out of the powers that be, out of their control, that I'm still able to locate my desire and I'm still able to put into action what it is that I desire. And I want to leave you all with that power that even if you think you can't, you actually can. And you can actually design and deliver the changes in your own life that you want to. It doesn't really start with thinking. To me, it usually starts with acting, putting yourself in an environment that you can take pleasurable action, which then in turn raises the vibration of your body, which then in turn clears your thinking, which then gives you clarity to imagine what's really important and what you really want to create. We have a whole arbitrary year in front of us. It's made up, but as long as it's made up and people are gonna agree on that reality, why not design the high points of your life as you want them for this coming year? It's really up to you. If you need help, there's coaches out there. I'm one of them. I'm so happy to help. I love helping people design the high points of their life because then they have something exciting to put their attention on rather than the news or the blues or the screws, whatever isn't lighting you up. So go ahead and dream your wildest dreams. Find the ones that electrify you. The body is an electrical series of actions and reactions. So get yourself in an environment that vitalizes you like the Austin Tantra Festival was. Put yourself in a landscape that electrifies you, beach, mountains, New York City, wherever it is that turns you on. 
and start taking the actions that really make you come alive. That's what we're here for, is to be alive while we are alive. There's plenty of time for the other stuff, maybe all eternity for all we know. So I'm gonna leave you with a quote. Don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Signing out of 2021 and welcoming 2022. And in 2022, it takes two. So the theme of the year is collaboration, two, zero, two, two. Couldn't be any clearer than that. Don't do it alone. Do it with another, do it in community, whatever it is that keeps you alive. Thank you so much for listening. Share with your friends. It's an honor to be able to share my wisdom with you. I invite you to our Embrace Retreat, January 3rd through 9th of 2022. We're gonna teach you seven levels of the body from the sit bones clear up to the crown of your head and remind you and your body what it's really for, for feeling your own experiences, for feeling with others, which is called compassion or entrainment, and for housing all of the joy, all of the sorrow that the human experience offers so generously. Oh, happy new year. Happy two year.